vision is seeing something in the future. I'm not seeing it for what it is right now, I'm seeing what the potential is and what it's gonna turn into. People hire us to come and visit their properties, consult with the landowner, increase wildlife numbers, improve habitat. As the last bell goes in the barn, that's the pride of the farm. That's the pride. From the creation of Land and Legacy, it's always been not necessarily about deer hunting or big deer, it's always been about the land and the legacy of land, of, of what your thumbprint or your footprint will be on that piece of ground. When I was growing up, there wasn't many quail on the family farm, but if there were, they were always in this 20 acre lot. Moving forward, we're gonna devote this 20 acres to a native grass restoration. We were in here doing the prescribed fire. We came back in here this morning to check, see how the fire had burnt through the entire burn unit. This restoration is gonna make sense from a hunting aspect, not only just a, a land management type deal too. And we started cutting the cedars. We still have a few more to cut. Yeah, you can still That's... see some fescue out through here. So there's estimated 17 million acres of fescue, tall fescue planted in Missouri. And tall fescue is not even native to the United States, and it's everywhere. We see it in our pastures, we see it in our lawns. As we started to become more devoted to cattle, here in the Ozarks especially, it was this grazing native grasses, and we just kept overgrazing it, putting too many cows on, and we really, it was really detrimental to the native grasses. So at that point, coming out of the Dust Bowl, we needed something that could withstand the grazing and, and the drought and grow it almost anywhere, and that's where tall fescue came along. And so it was really a saving grace for the cattle farmer, but unfortunately, it's been detrimental to the wildlife, and it's not great habitat. There's no forage benefit. It's not common knowledge that Deer don't really eat grasses. They don't really forage heavily on grasses. There's a few that they will, like your small grains, wheat, oats, but tall fescue, they don't eat. We want to remove the fescue, allow those native warm season grasses to grow to provide better habitat, and then different forage for the cattle as well. This little 20 acres is gonna be a great representation of going back to what was here when pioneers came about. As you know, Missouri turkey season opener is like, I like that day even more than my own birthday. So opening day was awesome. Of course, that turkey season is, is such a big time for us. Um, we love the turkey hunt all together. You know, we kicked it off this year. First time in, in a long time, my brother and I and Matt joined us. We all three got to hunt together. We went out and found a group of turkeys. You know how opening day goes sometimes. They flew down, shut up, and went the other way. I don't know what in the world. I'm still confused on what to happen. I can't even process what to do next. Listen. After fly down, we hear, oh! And it's kind of one of those moments where you like suck up against the tree. You're kind of like, where was that? And then he gobbles again, and you're like, he's back here behind us. We kept trying to pinpoint where he was and we realized he was in the field behind us, but as the property laid out, there was actually a little pinch. He works all the way in and as soon as he gets that pinch, his old weary toms will get, bloop, he dropped off into the ditch because he didn't want to go through that bottleneck. You know, every time we get a bird and we're trying to call him through a bottleneck, as fired up as they are, like that one, you thought, okay, he's all alone, he's fired up, he's gonna come, and then you look and you see the bottleneck, you're like, he ain't gonna go. You know? that point in the hunt, I thought, okay, these birds have flown down and shut up. This bird ain't working. I don't know if it's gonna work today.
my whole life this has been nothing but cedars and with a little bit of fescue out there in the open yeah so. we've cut the cedars we're going to slowly kind of clean it up get more native grasses out here it's going to be more summer grazing but also once we remove the cows late summer it's going to be premier bedding in here oh so. yeah clearing the cedars was part of basically that whole restoration project on that on the 20 acre portion of the property they had been there growing for years and years and years the Easter Red Cedar is actually a native to the U.S., but when pioneers came out here, fire was such a huge part of the landscape. And as we started settling the, the land, Smokey the Bear came along and fires were taken out of the landscape. So we have this species of the Eastern Red Cedar that's just taken off. It's really aggressive, grows quickly. I mean, there's a lot of documented studies showing the amount of invasion it's done. In Oklahoma, the state that comes to mind. It's really shown how quickly they've taken over. fire go through there, the sunlight's reaching to the forest floor. There should be a flush of green lush vegetation. It's a food plot, if you will, but a natural native food plot. It can be accessible to deer, to turkey, to quail, and that's exciting. You know, after the first morning, the turkeys flew down and went the other way and shut up, I thought, this might be difficult. I'm thinking go north okay, and give all these birds over here a break. We know this bird, this other one, that's going to blow her. We ended up sneaking up to another property, and as we're working up the creek bank, we pop up in a field, and there they are, a couple toms and jakes. We slip back around. Matt slides the decoys out. The toms are running the jakes. We knew we only had a few minutes probably to get these birds to come in before they went off with the other toms. So we slip back, Chad and I are on point, we sit up and it's just a, a beautiful alfalfa field. Give a few calls, they gobble and look out there and we can see turkeys standing out in the field looking at us. I don't see him anymore. <laughs> I shot the first one, the other one kind of flies up, lands, my brother takes him out. And it was actually the first time in all the years we've hunted together that we've ever doubled up. That was absolutely beautiful, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. There's a reason we keep doing this every year. Oh, yeah. It was definitely a special day, um, getting to see that show, opening day of Missouri turkey season, doubling up with your brother, doesn't get much better than that. So Trey closed on his property today. I'm super excited. Yeah, today's a really exciting day. Um, it's been a dream of mine for, you know, since I was a little kid to be able to have a piece of land that I can call my own. Yes, 
I think for me and a lot of guys, especially here in the Midwest, the American dream would be buying your own piece of ground, buying your own dirt. And so in the real estate side, you find a client who's looking for that piece, especially somebody like Trey, that's the wanting to find their very first piece of property and buy it, and then you get to help them improve the land to where not only they can enjoy it, but their kids. Smell it, to be for real. It's strong, I can smell it from here. He wants to hunt with his family and raise his kids in the outdoors. In my mind, that 80 acres offers so much more than what the surrounding properties do. When you look at buying a piece of ground, there's oftentimes, is it pretty or ugly? And sometimes you look at farms and say, oh, that's really ugly. In Trey's case, this property had been logged about three or four years ago, and there was a lot of underbrush that had grown up to where people thought it was ugly because it wasn't your park setting. But it was extremely beneficial to the wildlife. It's been three or four years since this property had been logged. So it's important that we maintain that road system. So we've got a dozer guy who's actually coming in to expand some plots, open them up, and then create and manage some of the existing roads on the property. This is a great ideal location for really one of the first food plots in the southeast corner of this property. If we get in here, do some dirt, dozer work, we can really clear this out and make it awesome. not really even a lot of dozer work. No, it's they're small trees, yeah. yeah. Pretty, pretty well open, but dotted through here. Being on this eastern half, it's kind of the pivot point for this whole area because most of the food's that way, so. Good couple split trees back here for stand ideas. We can flag those. Okay. But I see this as being really, on this eastern half, a dynamite hunting location. What are we planting in this clover or what? I see this being a great cl clover location. Yeah. Easy to maintain. It's gonna being the only food in this little part of the farm, it's going to take a lot of browse pressure, so we need something that can handle it. It's going to offer security. It's going to offer young forest. It's going to offer a lot of forage and have cover to hold deer. It's going to hunt great. I'm excited for them. Now we saw it whenever he was looking at it when we gave him the first showing, but now we're going to get to watch us transform over the next couple of years. We're going to get to see this property go from really a neglected, unmanaged piece of ground to a wildlife haven. Being able to be around guys that understand wildlife, understand the land restoration, uh, it's really exciting to be able to hang out with them and for them to coach and teach me along the way. While we're out on trays, we stumble upon this old barn, and one of the biggest things that I love is the stories that go with the land, of trying to look at a piece of property and see what it used to be and the pride that people had with that. So an old farmer had this barn, and it was just this beautiful thing, but over the years, farmers passed on, and it's just set. It's all about trying to leave a good footprint for the next generation to motivate them to where they see how much you poured into that ground to where they can kind of carry the torch, if you will, of improving the land.